All right, students. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Talha bin Nadi, and uh, I would be teaching you guys internal combustion engines uh, along with the Dr. Usman in this semester, fall 2020. Uh, as you guys uh, must have attended all the previous lectures, which were delivered, which were recorded by the Dr. Usman Lodi. Uh, you you guys started with the basic concepts and the basic components of the internal combustion engines and then in chapter number three you guys must have studied about the auto cycles diesel cycles dual combustion cycles uh, dual cycles and britain cycles as well in the uh, auto cycles are generally for si engines Dual, uh, diesel cycles are for uh, diesel operated is, uh, CI engines then dual combustion dual cycles uh, in, in the dual cycles you have heat addition process at constant volume and similarly at the constant pressure as well and then you must have also studied a little bit about the brittle cycle which are incorporated in aircrafts um, some of the uh, land based gas turbines are also used uh, gen generally return cycle is for uh, gas turbines and uh, then you guys studied about the fuels which are being used in the IC engines uh, some alternate fuels uh, you must have also studied about it today I am going to start about one of the most important and essential components of the IC engine and that is carburetors all right uh, internal combustion engines all the cars all the internal combustion engines basically require some fuel to operate that fuel will go into the combustion chamber where it will get combusted and then your car uh, then your car will uh, car will move similarly the first question uh, which arrives in our mind is how are we going to how are we going to uh, enter the fuel into the internal combustion engine so uh, there are many techniques there are many equipments which are being used in uh, the modern in the modern cars but the basic component which were being used in the uh, cars which are being used in cars that are uh, operating in the third world countries like Pakistan is of carburetor uh, carburetor basically makes the air fuel mixture carburetor is basically used for making the air fuel mixture fuel air that air fuel mixture is being sent to your combustion chamber where it will get ignite this this phenomena for the formation of combustible air fuel mixture is known as carburetion because we require different amount of fuel at different times for example if I am starting a car I require some different type of air fuel mixture and when I am moving the car when I am driving a car uh, with a constant speed then I require some other type of a fuel air mixture and when I am talking about uh, when I am accelerating my car then I will require some some different type of a fuel air mixture uh, we will discuss about the fuel air mixtures uh, in the later classes as well uh, carburetor the purpose of the carburetor is basically to make sure that what are whatever the requirements are 
it is basically sending that few layer mixture at that particular time. This is the purpose of the carburetor and that phenomena which is happening in the in that carburetor that is the making of a fuel air mixture formation of the fuel air mixture that phenomena is called carburation so the process of formation of combustible fuel air mixture by mixing the proper amount of a fuel with air before admission to engine cylinder is called carburation and the device which is used for this purpose which is used for this job is called carburetor okay uh, another important point which needs to be understand here is that carburetor not only mixes the fuel with the air or makes the proper makes the desired air fuel mixture it also atomizes the fuel Atomization of the fuel is also very important uh, when uh, as the fuel air mixture is induced in, inducted into the is inducted into the combustion chamber because for example if if I have a high volatile fuel or a fuel which is which has uh, uh, which is which has low volatility okay by the word low volatility means it is not going to be vaporized that much easily I mean if I compare to fuels like petrol and diesel petrol is highly volatile diesel is less volatile because petrol can be converted into vapors more easily more quickly its volatility is higher as compared to the diesel so volatility also makes an important factor means how mu how much easily how easily the fuel is vaporizing so the purpose of the carburetor is to ensure that the fuel not only mixes with the air but it also atomizes what's the importance of being atomized if because the atomization because if the fuel is not atomized the combustion will not take place properly but if the fuel is atomized there will be uh, for example they, they are the two two fuel particles there will be some air particles between them and they will combust the, the air particle will combust the fuel particles so what will what is the purpose of carburetor now the question is what is the purpose of carburetor you can simply answer it by saying the purpose of a carburetor is to make is to form a combustible air fuel mixture of the desired requirement and not only to make the air fuel mixture but it also the carburetor also atomizes the fuel so that proper combustion may take place Next we have the factors which affects the carburation. Uh, we have basically four factors which affects the carburation. We are going to discuss all of them one by one. The first one is the engine speed. Engine speed, for example, if I am running a car at a high engine speed, high speed, then we have a very few time available for the injection of for the for the preparation of uh, air fuel mixture and carburetor needs to ensure that that whatever the engine speed is whatever the speed at which the engine is operating uh, it has to provide that air fuel mixture uh, it has to provide the desired air fuel mixture so the time available for the mixture formation is very limited uh, therefore in order to achieve the high quality carburation and by the word here you have to you must understand this word as well 
what do we mean by high quality carburation high quality carburation by the word high quality carburation we may uh, i meant that how much the uh, the mixture the air fuel mixture has the vapor content of the fuel if the air fuel mixture has a high content of vapors it means it has a high quality carburetion but if the vapor content is low then it's not a high quality carburetion it car your it means that your carburetor is not working properly and it is not atomizing the fuel okay so it is also very important the purpose of the carburetor was to not only to make the air fuel mixture but also to atomize the fuel as well so uh, therefore in order to have high quality carburetion the velocity of air stream at the point of fuel injection has to be increased so how do we increase this velocity of the air, air incoming air stream the question is how do how can we increase the velocity of this incoming air stream and the answer to that question is very simple you must have also studied in the thermodynamics that in if if i want to increase the velocity of any fluid any uh, fluid which is flowing i can simply use a nozzle so here in the carburetor what we are doing is in or when if, uh, since we want to increase the velocity of the incoming air stream we will simply we have a simply a uh, nozzle section nozzle section which will increase the speed of the air and that air that when the speed is being increased the pressure will reduce and that di pressure difference will allow the fuel to move from one section to another section and that is into the carbon that is into the venturi section i, I will discuss these parts later as well so uh, what i am trying to say here is that when the engine speed is high when you have a high engine speed the time available for the carburetion is very low and your carburetor must be very efficient to overcome uh, to provide the desired air fuel mixture okay uh, this is achieved by introducing a venturi section simply i already uh, told you guys that we will be incorporating a venturi nozzle type section here we are basically using converging uh, in the carburetors we basically have a converging diverging nozzle section i will discuss these parts uh, later in my lectures then uh, the second factor which affects the carburetion is of the vaporization characteristics of the fuel as i discussed earlier that highly volatile hydrocarbons by the word highly volatile hydrocarbon i explained you earlier that highly volatile hydrocarbon means those hydrocarbons yeah those fuels which can be converted into vapors very easily and i gave you the example of the petrol and the diesel as well if i compare a petrol with a diesel petrol has high volatility as compared to the diesel petrol vaporizes into gaseous state more easily as compared to the diesel so vaporization characteristic of the fuel is also a very important factor which can affects your carburetion as well uh, vaporization characteristics are generally associated with the distillation curves of the fuel distillation curves basically tells you that how much percentage of the uh, 
uh, vapors will be there at that particular room temperature at that particular atmospheric temperature and uh, Dr. Osman uh, would have uh, discussed these distillation curves in the chapter number 6 as well uh, which was of the fuels. Uh, vaporization characteristics of the fuel, uh, so we basically had uh, the what are the factors which affects the carburation first one is the engine speed higher engine speeds uh, requires efficient uh, carburation as well uh, because we have a very less time available for making of the that air fuel mixture the second was of the vaporization characteristics of the fuel means high you, you, you simply require a high volatile hydrocarbon so the third factor which affects the carburation is of the temperature of incoming air uh, the higher the atmospheric temperature uh, of the air it will increase the vaporization of the fuel since the temperature is high it, uh, the fuel will get the energy will get the amount of uh, will get the required amount of energy to vaporize uh, from the surrounding and it will eventually produce a more homogeneous mixture so what uh, so it is basically going this factor is going as an advantage that increase in the incoming temperature of air will increase the vaporization characteristics of the fuel will increase the vaporization of the fuel and eventually it will lead to the formation of homogeneous mixture which is the primary requirement or the purpose of the carburetor to prepare a homogeneous mixture so that your IC engine can have a proper combustion the another thing another thing which comes in our mind which uh, the another question which arises in our mind should be that with the increase in the atmospheric temperature will it affect the volumetric efficiency so first we should understand what is the volumetric efficiency volumet uh, you guys must have studied the volumetric efficiency in the chapter number one volumetric efficiency can simply be defined as the amount of air the actual amount of air which is entering into the combustion chamber divided by the ideal amount of air which should have entered into the combustion chamber now what do we mean by that uh, it, it simply means that when that the amount of air which should have gone into the combustion chamber is not same to the amount which has actually gone into the combustion chamber uh, sim is, you can th this can simply be understand by uh, the concept of a density since the increase in temperature decreases the density of the air density is being decreased as the temperature is increased the same um, by, by the decrease in density uh, you can simply take it as you, the same amount of a mass will require a larger volume but the mass but the volume of the combustion chamber is not changing since the vo uh, volume of the combustion chamber of your engine is not changing uh, the same amount will not go into the combustion chamber which would have been gone in the uh, cold weather the lesser amount of uh, air will be going into inside your combustion chamber so uh, answer to that question can simply be yes and the atmospheric temperature will decrease the volumetric efficiency because it has because we have a low amount a lesser amount of a, uh, a mass of air is going into the cylinder it, which will eventually decrease the volumetric efficiency so uh, the next uh, the next point which basically 
and the next factor which affects the carburation is of the engine design so this this factor is simply as is uh, is associated with the uh, design designing of the engine and uh, the uh, uh, for example the amount of a uh, air fuel mixture some amount of a uh, air fuel mixture is coming into the intake manifold and then from that intake manifold it will go into the four cylinders four different cylinders so your designing should be in such a manner that the same amount of air fuel mixture the same amount of the fuel is going into the four cylinders if it is if the same amount of the fuel is not going uh, if the same air fuel mixture is not going inside the four cylinders then you can have some pulsations in the power output as well uh, you you can have some in uh, incomplete combustion improper combustions in some cylinders uh, because of that phenomena so uh, uh, from the designing point of view it is uh, it should be uh, make considerable that uh, you have distributed a homogeneous mixture inside the all cylinders all right uh, next we have some different types of uh, air fuel mixture we can uh, have three types of air fuel mixture first one is chemically correct mixture second one is rich mixture and the third one is the lean mixture so the chemically correct mixture is are those mixtures uh, in which you have provided the actual amount of air which was required for the proper combustion for example if a molecule of a fuel if a one molecule of a fuel requires 10 molecules of air and you are providing that then the combustion in that case in that scenario would be chemically correct would be chemically correct combustion it would be it will be the combustion will be complete and that mixture will be called chemically correct mixture since you have provided that exact same amount of air which was needed for proper combustion chemically correct mixtures are sometimes also called as stoichiometric mixtures so uh, and for example if a molecule requires 10 if a molecule of a fuel requires 10 molecules of air and i am providing 9 molecules of air for the combustion in that case in such case the combustion is the combustion uh, will not be a complete combustion since the amount of air is less which which was required for a proper combustion uh, so rich mixtures are those mixtures in which you have provided a less amount of air or you can simply say more amount of a fuel then we have a third amount of a uh, mixture that is of a lean mixture lean mixture means that if a fuel molecule required 10 molecules for proper combustion and you have now you have provided 12 molecules of air means you have provided some additional amount of air for combustion such molecules such type of air fuel mixtures are called lean mixture so uh, I'm just going to repeat these things again repeat these types of air fuel mixture we had basically three types of air fuel mixture chemically correct mixture rich mixture and lean mixture chemically correct mixtures are those mixtures which require which in which you have provided the stoichiometric amount of a uh, oxygen molecules for complete and proper combustion of a single fuel molecule okay for example if you if you have a single fuel molecule and it requires 10 molecules of oxygen you have provided that but if you have provided 8 molecules of oxygen then it will be called a rich mixture and if you have provided 12 molecules of a air it will be pro, it will be called lean mixture since you have provided a large amount of a air okay uh, next we must we must understand this uh, diagram 
as you can clearly see that from 9 from 9 till uh, you can say 17 at this point from this point till this point this is that combustible range of air fuel mixture at which your IC engine can operate this is the stoichiometric point this is your stoichiometric point from here to here you have a lean mixture you have excess air and by the word excess air means you have a lean mixture and from stoichiometric point to the left side you have excess fuel and by the word excess fuel means you have a rich mixture so I'm simply pointing it out that you have a lean mixture on the right hand side of the stoichiometric point and you have a rich mixture on the left hand side of stoichiometric point so and this is your combustible range means your IC engine can operate inside this range from 9 to let's say 17 9 to 17 your IC engine is going to operate but if you provide a much leaner mixture uh, let's say 7, uh, 18 or 19 then your IC engine then your car uh, may have incomplete combustion and it, it, it will not operate properly and if you provide a air fuel mixture which is lesser than 9 let's say 7 8 then you have provided a very much rich mixture and it will not burn properly because it has a less amount of oxygen so since the since we have a less amount of oxygen fuel molecules cannot combust so uh, uh, we can summarize this uh, diagram by saying that when your air fuel mixture is too lean it will not burn properly too lean something around which is which is go go beyond 17 it will not burn properly and similarly we can say that if your air fuel mixture is too rich let's say rich richer richer than this limit means air fuel ratio is something around 7 8 then your car may not operate properly as well so this is however a limited range of air fuel ratio in a homogeneous mixture only within which combustion in SI engine will occur outside this range the ratio is either too rich or too lean to sustain flame propagation this, this useful range is from 9 to 19 as shown in the figure uh, uh, one, one more important thing which needs to be understand here is sustained flammable propagation we will discuss this sustained flame, flame propagation in the in chapter number 10 of combustion in details in, but I will give you a brief uh, overview about it uh, right now flame by the word flame propagation it is meant that flame will start from this point and it will move throughout the combustion chamber as the flame is generated and it is propagating towards the other side of the combustion chamber this phenomena is called flame propagation and if you have provided a too much rich mixture or too lean air fuel mixture then this flame will not propagate throughout the combustion chamber or you can simply say it cannot sustain that environment okay so if I if the uh, mixture is too rich or too lean uh, your flame propagation will not sustain the carburetor should provide an air fuel ratio in accordance with engine operating requirement and this ratio must be within the combustible range
all right uh, next we have uh, another graph here in which you can see uh, they are basically two graphs first one is of air fuel ratio and on the y axis you can simply see power output and it is another graph of air fuel ratio with a BSFC and you can simply call it as brake specific fuel consumption as well it's the short form of brake specific fuel consumption so we will discuss these graphs uh, one by one if i am talking about the curve of air fuel ratio and power output this is the curve for air fuel ratio and power output you can see that if you want a high power it is coming at this point something around 12 and if you increase the air fuel ratio or you are sending a lean mixture then this power output will decrease this is the stoichiometric mixture so this graph is basically telling us that when whenever you require a high power you have to provide a rich mixture this is the stoichiometric point and if you go beyond this point to the right side of this point you get a rich mixture or and if you go left side of this point you will get a lean mixture and I'm, uh, I'm simply writing it down you have a lean mixture on the right side and on the left side of the stoichiometric mixture we, we have a rich rich air fuel mixture region on the left side of this stoichiometric point so uh, with this we can simply conclude that the best power will occur at this point which is, in, which is lying in the rich air fuel mixture region so uh, this graph is basically telling us that when you uh, when whenever you need a high power which is in the case of idling and accelerating conditions when you are accelerating your car you need high power so you have to provide a rich air fuel mixture and when uh, and now uh, we will talk about the uh, other graph which is uh, which is of this air fuel ratio and brake specific fuel consumption here you can simply see as well that at this point this point when the air fuel mixture is around 16 you we can have we have the less we have very we have the smallest brake specific fuel consumption means the small amount of a fuel is being consumed to run your to operate your IC engine and the small amount of a fuel consumption means that you are operating your engine at the best economy so uh, whenever whenever you are running your engine and un engine under the normal circumstances under the normal conditions it is desirable that you run your engine for uh, that you are operating your IC engine with the best economy or with the lowest brake specific fuel consumption means the less amount of a fuel is consumed to produce the work so for that purpose you basically 
uh, in order to obtain the best economy we have to provide lean mixture so from these graphs we can simply conclude that maximum output is at when the air fuel ratio was 12 is to 1 means for one molecule of a fuel we were sending 12 molecules of air and at this point we are getting the best power next is for the minimum fuel consumption or for the best economy the air fuel ratio should be 16 is to 1 means 16 molecules of air should be sent for one molecule of a fuel it can be noted that the best power mixture is much richer than the chemically correct mixture and the best economy mixture is slightly leaner than the chemically correct when engine is operating at full throttle under the normal conditions it is desirable to run the engine on the maximum economy simply uh, when you require high power best power which is in the case of when you are accelerating your car or you are starting your car from idling condition you need a high power so you require a rich air fuel mixture and when you are operating your car under the normal condition you require you 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 want to spend less amount of a fuel so you you what you do is you want to operate your engine at the best economy well so at in this case the best economy is at when the air fuel ratio is 16 okay guys uh, so that's all for today we will continue uh, the topic of carburetor in the next class uh, okay allah is see you next time